Hey there, chummers, and welcome to another Shadowrun review. I know that uh, I haven't done a lore video for, for a little bit. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. Uh, number one, I'm still working on a couple of lore videos, so I've got some I uh, some irons in the fire, so to speak. Um, but also, it's Christmas break, and my kid's home, and I'm not really going to be able to do too much recording. So I'm recording this today. I'm probably going to record another little end-of-the-year update video to kind of discuss a little bit about what you can expect to see from this channel um, in the coming year of 2022, which uh, hopefully is a lot better than 2021. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to really be able to do a whole lot of recording uh, until school starts back up again. So here we are. So the, uh, the book that we're going to be reviewing today is another oldie but a goodie from the days of Shadowrun 2nd Edition Paranormal Animals of North America. And you can also apply this review to its sister book, Paranormal Animals of Europe, as well. Now, what is this book? Well, this book is essentially the Critter's Handbook for Shadowrun 2nd Edition. And it's actually a really, really good book. Even though it's old, a lot of the information in it holds up. There's been some minor tweaks to some critters throughout the years, but by and large, this is all still pretty up-to-date information. Game statistics, it's, it's not going to be very up-to-date at all because it's from 2nd Edition. But information-wise, fluff-wise, yeah, all, a lot of this, almost all of this still applies today. Like I said, there's been some minor tweaks over the years, but not a whole lot. So this book was published in 1990, and as you can see, it is just a book of awakened animals and beings and spirits and that sort of thing. Uh, it discusses the powers of the awakened, and we also have the obligatory... Uh, the obligatory uh, f short story at the beginning. Uh, but yeah, all of this is done as a written up as part of like a, a nature guide, essentially, is what it is. So it starts with talking about the powers of the awakened. So game terms, you know, what these critters can do to your runners in games. And it has a description of each of the powers, the rules behind it, and so on and so forth. Game stats for all the critters in here as well. Again, this stuff's going to be out of date if you're playing anything beyond Shadowrun 3rd Edition. Um, at least game statistics-wise. This stuff has changed a lot over the years. The uh, the fluff and, and information behind a lot of these critters has not changed very much at all. So when you get into the book proper, you get a couple of things with each entry. You get the name, the common name, as well as the Latin name as well. So for the Ardwolf right here, that's the common name. And then you've got Protelis no Novalis. I have no idea if I pronounced that right, but uh, yeah, sue me. It's not a Latin channel. It's a Shadowrun channel. <laughs> so you get some information about how the animal looks, you know, some of the defining characteristics and that sort of thing, uh, whether or not the, the, the critter is magically capable. Uh, and then you get kind of a brief description of the habitats that it lives in. Well, the the habitat that it lives in, as well as the habit. So the behavior in general of the critter and a little bit of commentary as well. It's a little short for each entry. E each entry gets like a page of this at most, maybe a page and a half. So there's not much to it. And then you also get like, you know, the powers and the weaknesses and that sort of thing. Um, and then on the next page, it's going to have the game information, but it's also going to have a little bit of fluff text from some of the runners that are perusing the uh, the, the nature guide, quote unquote, um, talking about some of their run-ins with some of the critters or um, you know what they think about it. And then this is the part that I love the most. Every single entry has a range map and a size comparison. So you can see how big the animal is in relation to your shadow runners. And you can also, it lists by, it, that's a, a normal human, by the way. It lists generally the size comparison to a normal human, which is still very, very useful. But it also gives the range of an animal as well. So you can, you, you, you can, 
get an idea of where these paracritters live, what their habitats are, what part of the North American continent they, they frequent. So that way you don't get weird stuff like, oh, I don't know, a behemoth up in the Athabas Athabascan Council or something like that. Uh, so this is this has been helpful to me on so many occasions. It 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 really has. I mean, yeah, you can get away with you know most critters being in Seattle if you're you know if you're running in Seattle, the corporation hire, you know captures them as uh, paranormal security, brings them in that sort of thing. But it, it's nice to have a range, uh, a home range for all of these crews. And the fact that there's a picture with each critter as well. That is just, that is really good. This is something that I didn't like about the third edition Shadowrun Critters book. The Critters book was like a couple lines of very brief flavor text, maybe a paragraph of brief flavor text per um, per animal, uh, and then game stats, and that was it. No pictures, no range, you didn't know where the animal lived, you didn't know what it looked like. You could kind of guess sometimes from some of the descriptions, but having a picture of the critter is just... It's it's so helpful. It's it it really is. And the size comparison again. It's it's awesome. I mean, in this book, the the amount of fluff in it is again. It, it speaks to the world building that Shadowrun had. Uh, that Shadowrun excelled at in the earlier editions, particularly with second and third edition. Fourth edition is pretty good with the world world building world building as well um but it seems like second and third edition were more universal in how useful a lot of the books were with regards to world world building maybe that's just maybe that's just me you know remembering it with with rose colored glasses i don't i don't know <laughs> but still this is a an extremely extremely good book if nothing else, just so that you know what every critter looks like, that alone is worth the cost of the PDF or, or if you can find the hard copy. I've actually seen a fair amount of these um, listed on eBay for some pretty decent prices, actually. I think I mostly see like the paranormal animals of Europe and paranormal animals of North America uh, put together in like a bundle. I think 30 bucks, maybe 30, 40 dollars. So not too bad actually, for, for, for an older book, a book that's, God, 30 years old now. Ugh, that makes me feel old. <laughs> it really does make me feel old. So, now, I did mention earlier that um, there's been uh, some changes with some of the information in this book. The, the one that struck me the most was, you know, when I was using this book for the Century Ferret, my, my video on the century ferret. So you have the century ferret right here. You have the description. Uh, number one, the, the, the century ferret also appears in uh, para, the parazoology supplement for fourth edition, which wasn't a full book. It was more like it was more like a DLC, which actually fourth edition did a lot of those, and they were actually pretty good uh, for the most part. But uh, the century ferret in fourth edition looked less alien and more like an actual like an actual ferret like a very large ferret this one it's kind of got like that weird 90s 80s 90s aesthetic that Shadowrun had so it looks a little odd but also uh this century ferret this version of the century ferret was a little bit smaller if i remember correctly than the parazoology ferret the parazoology ferret i believe was listed as like one to three meters um, this one is 0.9 to 2 meters long with the tail, which not a huge difference really, but there is, it's, there's a little, it's a little bit of a difference, but I, I, at the end, is it anything that is, you know, game breaking or really going to affect it very much? No, the information given in Paranormal Animals of North America is going to be just as valid to Shadowrun 4th edition as that edition Century Ferret is going to be. So, again, minor differences, but it's it's nothing that can't be, you know, worked around or just outright ignored in a lot of cases. So, yeah, Paranormal Animals of North America, definitely worth the buy. Get it. 
Drive Through RPG has it on PDF. I'll put the link to that in the description of the video so you can go check that out. I really should see about becoming an affiliate for Drive Through RPG. I send a lot of people their way, it seems. <laughs> so, anyway, let me know what you think of this book in the comments section. Have you used the book? Have you found it useful? Did you love it? Did you hate it? I have a feeling that most people are going to love this book because it is just a really, really great book book. Well written, well designed, lots of information, very, very useful. Doesn't matter what edition of Shadowrun you're playing. But let me know in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, I will see you all next time. And that's the chip truth, chummers. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more Shadowrun content. Hit that notification bell so you will always know when I upload a brand new Shadowrun video. And until next time, remember to shoot straight and never, ever deal with a dragon.